What if I told you that most people have got it all wrong about the Apple M3 Max chip, including Apple? Most reviewers compare this to other laptops, mostly Apple's own laptops, and the conclusion is not impressive. And then the new chip, it's great and everything, but it's not actually going to make a meaningful difference to my workflow. With a couple of videos that I edit on the go on my laptop from the M1 Max laptop that I've been using. So I canceled. Thanks for that, Marquez. And this is one of the reasons why most people don't understand how ridiculous the M3 Max chip is. I honestly can't believe that Apple didn't compare their M3 Max to the Intel chips here. I have tested the desktop variants of i5, i7, and i9. The results are shocking to say the least. Please let me show you what I mean. Part of this video is sponsored by Fazebo and their sit-stand desks. Fazebo strives to make great designs accessible to all with their high quality desks at reasonable prices. I've chosen the mid-century design style with dark wood, dark drawer fronts and legs with golden handles. There's a wider middle drawer that's shallow to not compromise the leg room and narrow side drawers on both sides. The three drawers allow me to keep a clean desk while not making the desk too bulky. It's a sit-stand desk with a quiet electric motor which creates less than 50 decibels of noise, not disturbing the people or colleagues around you. It supports payloads of up to 80 kilos. This desk comes at two lengths. You can choose between 120 centimeters or 140 centimeters if you have more space. The one I have in this video is a 120 centimeter version. Fazebo offers all sorts of office and lifestyle products. I'm especially fond of their desk designs. Use the code TECHNOTICE to receive $25 off your purchase. Check out Fazebo and their full range of desks and other products in the video description below. Firstly, I'd like to mention that this M3 Max has 12 P cores and 4 E cores which is more than Intel has ever managed to pack in their desktop variants of CPUs. The maximum amount of P cores Intel has ever managed to put there is eight, apart from the Xeon, which is another world of CPUs. But desktop variants, always maximum eight. Now, let me show you the benchmarks and then I'll save the shocking results till the end. So first, let's take a look at CPU performance. And I am comparing the 13600K, 700K and 900K, the desktop variants. So looking at the M3 Max, which is our baseline here, the i5 is about 17 to 20% slower in the single and multi-core scores in Cinebench R24. The i7 is about 12, 13% slower in the single core score, but about the same in the multi-core score. About 0.8% slower, slightly slower. The i9 is still slower on the single core score, but about 28, 29% faster in the multi-core score. Do you understand what these results mean? Let me get you all of them out of the way, then I'll explain. Geekbench 6, Another CPU task that tests lots of different things that the CPU does. Lots of little everyday tasks, whatever you might be doing. The i5 is about 13 to 19% slower in single and multi-core scores. The i7 is about 7 to 9% slower in the single and multi-core scores. The i9 is about 1.5% slower in the single core score, but about 1.2% faster in the multi-core scores. All right, let's move on to Blender. This is where we're testing CPU rendering. They have GPU as well, and you could get a dedicated GPU, like an RTX 3090 or RTX 4090 that you can attach to these as well. But we'll get to that point in a minute. Firstly, the CPU and how good is the CPU in rendering? The i5 is about 13 to 21% slower in the rendering scores. The i7, is about two to 13% faster in monster junk shop and classroom scenes. And the i9 is a whopping 33 to 46% faster in the monster junk shop and classroom scenes. Now the i9 has 24 cores, eight P cores and 16 E cores. The i7 has eight P cores and eight E cores. The i5 has 14 cores 6P cores and 8E cores. Now, quick recap, the M3 is seriously impressive, 
but it gets better. Next up, I wanted to test Adobe applications and I took out Puget Bench for Creators application. This tests Photoshop and lots of different things that you can do in Photoshop. We have the general filter and overall scores. Now bear in mind, my Intel desktop variants are using an RTX 4090 with 64 gigabytes of DDR5 and a massive 360 millimeter cooler and lots of other things. Now we can see that the i5 is about 9 to 27% slower than the M3 Max. The i7 is about 3 to 22% slower than the M3 Max. And now the i9 is about 8% slower in the overall scores. The general score is 3% faster, but the filter score is about 18% slower. Do you understand what these scores mean? Let's keep going. Then another application that the Puget Bench for creators uh, supports is Premiere Pro. Adobe Premiere Pro has the most users in video editing around the world. It's still the biggest video editing application that people use around the world, apparently. And now for the test setup, I tested the i5, i7 and i9 desktop variants with the RTX 3090. This one has 24 gigabytes dedicated RAM, loads of CUDA cores, optimized for this performance there for Adobe. This GPU costs a ton and it pulls over 300 watts when utilized, just the GPU alone. When looking at the scores here, the i5 is about 10 to 18 percent faster in the standard and extended overall scores but here we got to give massive credit to intel and their tiny little igpu inside there the little processing unit in there that offers intel quicksync which massively accelerates our h265 h264 codex and we can see huge performance even from the i5 and that's why the i5 is faster in most of the things there but the intra frame score here is about 28 to 30 percent slower on the i5 now intra frame codex are something like prores where you have individual frames for every single you know frame of your video but the long GOP is something that we have like H.264 and 265 where the compression takes like a whole group of pictures and kind of figures out, okay, what's moving and how can we save and make the file smaller, which means it's harder to play back, which the dedicated hardware, what we have here on Intel, the iGPU is actually outperforming the M3 Max media engines inside, which is impressive for Intel side. The i7 is about 17 to 24 percent faster in the extended and standard overall scores but again on the intra frame scores we're 20 to 24 percent slower and here you can see that the gpu effects on all of the i5 i7 and i9 are about 50 percent faster when using this rtx 3090 and finally the i9 is about 21 to 30 percent faster but still the intra frame scores are better on the Apple because Apple has dedicated and really optimized their media engines for ProRes encoding and decoding. Now, the M3 Max doesn't get that big of a win here in Premiere Pro, but that's part of the results. I also wanted to test the exporting capabilities of this and not just exporting a single codec what we have on the previous test there for Puget Bench where it tests a certain codec like ProRes H.264 or DNX or Ari Raw or some kind of one codec and exports it to a different format. What if we are using more real world, you know, project where we have Adobe Premiere Pro and we put lots of different codecs in there. We have to up res, down res, we have to speed up the clips or slow down the clips, effects, graphics, you know, color grading, all sorts of things happening around on the timeline. And we have more complex things happening. So we're not just utilizing either the media engines or the GPU power. We have to utilize the whole thing, the whole package, RAM, CPU, GPU, media engines, everything. The first test I did was with an RTX 4090. So I'm giving the best opportunity, the best case scenario for Intel to win against Apple. The RTX 4090 in there, which costs about two grand 
on its own. And here we can see that the M3 Max finished that encoding. It's about 20 minute timeline and it finished the export in 13 minutes and 49 seconds. The i5 beat it by one second with the RTX 4090. 13 minutes, 48 seconds. Moving on to the i7 now, more power. The i7 completed it with 12 minutes and 20 seconds, which is about 10 to 11 percent faster than the M3 Max. And the i9 was even a little bit more faster, around 12 percent faster than the M3 Max at 12 minutes and 11 seconds. But then with the M3 and on Apple, the chip actually performs better when it's cooled down. The more it heats up, it actually starts to throttle a little bit or doesn't let the chip to boost as high as you can. So what I did was the laptop has been cold all night, turn the laptop on, put the power plug in and increase the power mode to high power mode and tried the test again. And now our M3 Max completed it in 12 minutes and 50 seconds, which shaved off another minute from the full time. And then I swapped out the GPU on the Intel system to RTX 3090 and wanted to see what are the results then. The i5 now is actually slower than the M3 Max and completed in 13 minutes and 14 seconds, about 3% slower. The i7 now completed in 13 minutes and 8 seconds, which again is slower than the M3 Max. And finally, our i9 13900K completed the test exactly at the same time as the M3 Max, 12 minutes and 50 seconds with an RTX 3090. And this brings me to the most shocking results of all what you've just seen, the power consumption. Okay, this M3 Max at the most pulls around 70 watts the whole package, the whole system draw. The CPU roughly about 50, 60 watts, something like that, when we're using Cinebench R23, fully utilized, something like that. But the whole sick thing, 70 watts. Now, what is it compared to the i5, i7, and i9? The i5 pulls 150 watts from the socket. That's just the CPU. Never mind the cooler, the fans, the RAM, the SSDs, the motherboard, the GPU, and then the power supply and its efficiency rating. The whole system draw is, I'll tell you in a minute. The i7 is pulling 240 watts. Now we're already more than three times the wattage of the M3 Max, just the CPU. And the i9 is pulling roughly around 320 watts from the socket. Now, what does it mean? It means that when we take something the likes of Cinebench R24 and we're checking out the system power draw, how much power are we drawing, then you can see that the M3 Max is getting 24.2 points per watt. And bear in mind, I am using the whole system package draw, which is actually less. 70 watts is maximum. If you do actually Cinebench R23, you can see about 50, 60 watts there. Okay, it's not 70. So actually, it's even better what you see in these results here. The i5 is pulling about 150 watts and it's 62.9% slower. The i7 is even worse, about seven points per watt and the i9 about 6.8% per watt. So the i7 and i9 use more than three times the power to get the same work done. Now, if we are thinking about the whole system power draw, it's even worse because if we take the i9, this GPU, the 4090 pulls 450 watts from the socket, plus the i9, 320, we are already more than 10 times the system power draw what we get on this. And here's the most insane thing. This Apple M3 Max uses and performs all of this on battery power. Whether you've got it plugged in or you use it on battery power, you get the same results compared to something of this size. Now, in order to get this type of performance from Apple, you're gonna have to cash out $4,000.
and that's quite a lot, but during the holiday season, you might be getting some discounts from Apple because they're not getting that many sales, apparently. So I'm gonna leave the best deals in the description below if you wanna pick one of these up. But if you wanna build a PC for the same amount, you can get a pretty solid system. If you don't need a portability, you can actually get it cheaper than this for the same performance or better. Even the i5 from Intel these days is absolutely insane performance. So if you're interested in that and want to build yourself the best bang for buck, create a PC, you'll find some build guides in the description below, whatever budget you have. Now, here's what I want to know is what if Intel just removed its power limits and made a proper desktop PC? or computer. And I'm not talking about the Mac Studio that uses the same amount of watts than you can get on a laptop. And there isn't that much difference in performance whether you've got it on a laptop or on a Mac Studio. I mean, what if a Mac Studio would be double the size and pulled double the watts? What would the performance be? What the GPU power would be? That would be absolutely un- One second. Yes, hello? Hi, Tim. Yeah, hi, Tim. Yeah, 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 doing good, 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 good. Um, so, um, I've told them what you wanted me to, to tell them. So, when's the uh, word of cash, if I'm quoting, uh, you know, your own words, uh, gonna land uh, in the studio? Sorry? What do you mean you can't pay? What do you mean you're not paying? But... It, <laughs> Yeah, of course they can go and buy stuff from technotistore.com. But the point was that you were gonna pay for the video, not that they have to pay for the video. So you're saying I made this video for nothing? Yeah!